Hello and welcome back once again to the Gorilla Biker. Today we're riding an Indian Scout 1200 and this is my first time ever on a cruiser like this. I've never ridden a Scout and it sounds fantastic straight off the bat. So if you haven't seen my um, Zero DS video, I borrowed this bike from Franklin Motorcycles in Dublin. Absolute gentleman. If you're looking for a bike, make sure you hit them up. Make sure you follow them on Instagram. I'll leave just links in the description for everything. Um, and if you do have an interest, please do check them out. Because they've been very kind in allowing me to take these bikes out today. So this is again a true first ride, same as the DS was. So we're going to start straight into it. Ergonomics. Everyone's favourite. So ergonomically, I am more comfortable than I thought I'd be. I'm not cramped on it. The bars are nice, the angle they are. You could move them up a bit as well, like you can roll these bars. That wouldn't be a big deal, just reposition everything. Switch gear so far is very nice. I had it go through everything before we took off and I'm very happy with it. Um, rear brake, comfortable. Front brake, comfortable. The seat, the seat is actually really comfortable. I don't know, is that just a thing with Indians in general? Because this is, oh, this is my first ever Indian um, as well, so. I was an Indian version, ver, version? <laughs> I was an Indian virgin until I turned this on today. So, really good experience so far. You know, the mirrors are at a nice height. I really, really like the display. So, you have everything you need, really. Ex you know, th these type of bikes don't generally do revs. So I know if anyone watches the channel, they'll know I have a Magna, which obviously does display revs, but you don't really need it. Because you can hear it <laughs> and it sounds absolutely fantastic so they're a very torquey bike I'll put power and torque um, specifications for this one up here on the screen afterwards because I don't know them off the top of my head it's a six-speed bike and the only thing I would do just already is I think I would widen the tow peg for the um, the gear changes from from a an ergonomics point of view, I think that'll be a little bit more comfortable for me. It's really comfortable in the turns and stuff, but yeah, ergonomically I'm impressed. I am comfortable on the seat. How would I be after a long ride? I don't know, but purely from a first ride perspective, I'm very comfortable. Suspension is nice. To go back to the dash and stuff, everything is really easy to read. The only thing is we'll get into practicality in a few minutes and we'll go through that but you do not have a fuel gauge on this bike if that's something that you look for in a bike then you know you're, you're, you're going to be missing that it's it's not there it's not something they have on on and as an option so you know that might be something that upsets you but i really like it so ergonomically like from a perspective of can i see what's there because we're not we're not talking about practicality yet i can very clear display um, I really like the design of it. It matches in with the color of the bike really, really well. You know, the cream and the red. It's absolutely gorgeous. The clutch, obviously, is a cable clutch. They don't really go wrong, so also nice and functional. And the the actual brake handle and the clutch handle are also comfortable. So that, you know, scores fine from there. It's a pretty comfortable bike for a cruiser class. And I'll have to add, I'll have to do the Magna to add it um, to the cruiser class, but. Straight off the bat, I'll tell you this is more comfortable than my Magna. I love my Magna, but this is more comfortable, definitely. Now the only thing is, for me, I've hurt my left shoulder quite a bit, and whatever it is, I can just feel it already. The way the bars are set up, for me, I, I do have a pain here, but that's just my, my broken body. For you, um, as a normal undamaged human, you'd be quite comfortable. And bars can be adjusted anyway. Right, moving on to power. As I said, I'll put the specifications up on the screen, but how it feels, I'll go through when we get away from this bit of traffic here. So power, how does it feel? It's extremely torquey. I absolutely love the power delivery on it, but it feels really good how it's delivered to the ground anyway. I don't think you need to worry about top speed on a bike like this, but yeah, the power is there. As you can see and it's it's really like this the delivery is so buttery smooth so it's a big it's a big v-twin it sounds fantastic um, I'm gonna have to put in a 
<laughs> a noise as part of the aesthetics for a cruiser is because it just sounds unbelievably good but here's the thing right with these type of bikes and I don't know if, you, if you're not a cruiser rider I apologize in advance because you're probably not interested in this but as someone who does uh, who has been known to enjoy partaking in a cruiser every now and again part of the appeal of cruisers is how they sound and how they look it's all about the looks and this bike we'll get to that in a while but I think it looks great but it sounds bloody fantastic if this is something you're just taking out for an evening bash around the place you know get some power down get some miles in make some noise oh it makes noise it makes noise really good and that brings us on right we'll, we'll move on to handling so so far I'm very comfortable on it I haven't done any fast bends or anything but in like normal traffic it handles perfectly you know steering is nice it definitely can't lean as far as um, the Magna and when I do review the Magna we'll do some form of comparison with that but I can already tell you when you're leaning this you, you always know when you're getting to it because you can kind of feel it on your feet and this definitely um, will we'll call a halt to, to leaning proceedings um, before the Magna but the Magna is known as a sports cruiser this isn't this is a cruiser this is an out and out cruiser you know same as the Scout Bobber which looks fantastic I know Franklin also have a Scout Bobber in there brand new in black on black on black and it's just great uh, this one as well if you're thinking that all these sound like this this does have a um, Vance and Hines slip-ons on it so you know don't be expecting your new bike to sound like this because it just won't sound like that <laughs> but with the Vantanine slip-ons I'm not sure on cost what you can make your bike sound like that you know they're only slip-ons it's not a full system so it wouldn't be too bad and obviously they wear okay because this one is you know it has 8,900 kilometers on it and it is for sale so if you want something like this hit up Franklin I have to say if I was going to buy a bike I'd happily deal with them if, if and when I buy an FTR 1200 which I want to do I would happily buy it from them. back to handling and yeah I'm going to pop around on my um, reviews a lot because I can't remember anything I'm really bad at this <laughs> with the handling I don't know how much you've seen in the video so far but it handles really nice and you know slow slow sharp ends it's once it's moving it feels like nothing I can I can move this around so so easily it's really flickable is it gonna lean far like I said no it's not gonna lean far but you don't buy a cruiser to go lean and racing around tracks anyway this but it, it feels really really solid in a straight line I'm, re I'm really enjoying it actually now the brakes on this model but I assume that's because it's used are not fantastic like from a braking perspective I would have to mark it down um, just because you know you you can give it a full fist uh, and it doesn't stop as you might expect something like this should stop uh, it's a big heavy bike I would I would personally I would like it to brake better but I think that's probably due to the fact this one is used and maybe um, needs the brakes just serviced or looked at or played or new pads or something and I don't think that's insurmountable and from a handling perspective the clutch is nice and predictable the throttle is nice and predictable and the throttle delivers power beautiful it's, but, it's butter butter smooth the big old twin and then that brings us on to practicality so when I was in Franklin there very interestingly there was another man in there looking at um, looking at bikes and he was saying about the bobber uh, I don't think I could get one because I couldn't commute on it and I said to him false in a nice way I didn't I didn't say false you sir are a liar but no I, I you know I said well actually I commute on my Magna it's absolutely fine this is the same it's a nice narrow bike is it more pleasant commuting on a taller bike it is because you can see more but that doesn't mean that if you can only afford one bike and you want that one bike to be an Indian Scout because you like them that you can't, it can't be your do everything bike this absolutely can be your do everything bike and this being the 1200 it's going to be absolutely fine at motorway speeds as well and from a practical sense um, it's also not 
mad expensive to buy one of these. Is it expensive? Yeah, it's, an, it's a brand new big engine cruiser. It's, it, of course, relatively, to me anyway, relative is going to be expensive. The most I've ever spent on a bike was three and a half thousand euro. Not including the extras I added afterwards, but that's how much I spent to buy it, right? With something like this, you know, you're going to be spending it for new, but like at the same time, you know, a 1200 engine is going to last forever because it's a massively huge understressed engine. You're never going to really manage to stress this type of engine. Now, the other point that practicality comes in is, in my opinion, extras. This is where this is going to lose out a little bit. So this does have ABS, so it does have that as an extra, which is good on a big, big, heavy bike. It has a neutral indicator, it has a, you're low on fuel light. But what it doesn't have is something which I personally find absolutely great is a fuel gauge. I love fuel gauges. If you don't like fuel gauges, there's probably something wrong with you. They're so, so handy. Please don't kill me. Thank you. Fuel gauges are really, really, really handy. This also doesn't have a rev indicator, but again, like I said earlier, I don't think that matters in this bike. Would cruise control be nice in this bike? Yeah, but if you want all those things, buy a Chieftain, you know what I mean? This is kind of, it's not their budget model. It's definitely not a budget model. It, feel, it feels and looks far too well put together to be referred to as a budget model. That was fun. It can hang out in the corners all right. Kickstand is easy to get to. All right, so let's do an old walk around. So this, again, like I said, it has the Vance and Hines option on the pipes. It looks really, really good, in my opinion. I love, I love how they have the engine covered. You know, it doesn't have any fake cooling fins or anything. It is, it is a liquid-cooled bike. That's pretty obvious from the setup of it. And I really like the look of it. I love the seats. I think the seats are gorgeous. I like the tail lights, they're beautiful as well. Um, again, personal preference, I'd put these black. I probably have this, the same color as the engine. But that's just personal preference. The, how it's put together is, is excellent. And then the front end also looks really, really good. Big meaty wheels, and that's what I was saying. You can actually, the good thing about the wheels is you can feel when you're getting towards the edge of them. And I used pretty much to the edge of it there, I'd say. but. You can feel it. So overall, so far on this bike, I'm really impressed. Really, really nice to ride, sounds great. Ergonomically, it's really comfortable. And that definitely, the longer I sit on it, the more I'm certain that is a long, that is a comfortable long-term seat. Uh, well, long distance seat. Not so sure about a pillion. For the, for the, for the, for the driver rider, uh, it's definitely comfortable. Aesthetically, I really like it. Really, really, really like it. It handles great for a, he for a heavy cruiser, but again, same as the magnets because it has a nice low center of gravity so of course it handles well you know practicality i mean it's as practical as you want it to be can you commute on this absolutely why not of course you can there's space to tie luggage on you can get panniers for it you can see there you can fit panniers quite easily yeah it's, a, it's a, like a 12.5 liter fuel tank which isn't the biggest fuel tank in the world but it's also not too small and it's not too expensive if you're if you're going to purchase it for me like if you if you're out in the market for a brand new bike this is an okay price to pay for a cruiser but I suppose an overall feel kind of kind of thing I didn't I I'm really bad <laughs> at remembering to give an overall feel but an overall feel on this so far I like it um, and it's this is something that you you might run into with my reviews right um, I like pretty much every bike I've ever ridden I've liked you know because I enjoy the different experiences that, that the different types of bikes can provide. You know, I've ridden the Super Sports, I've ridden several, ridden several Super Sports, and they're all absolutely amazing. But they all want you to go really fast. And from a personal perspective, as a, as a, as a taller human, they also kind of half cripple you over long distance. Not on purpose, they're not vindictive, they're just, that's the way they're designed, you know. They don't have a, emotional feelings towards you one way or the other, they just... That's just how they are, they hurt a little bit, you know? With this bike, you know, the experience is about the torque and the noise and the cool factor. And it has all three of those, and I really like it. Would I buy one? Absolutely. I'd probably mess with the bars a bit just because of my shoulder injury. Like, I can feel it on the front of my left shoulder, but that's not the bike's fault. That's my fault, that's a failing with my design. 
and it's an engine that really likes to be revved it reacts really well to being revved it sounds oh just even like a little bit like that it's just oh mm, oh bellissima really really sounds good and even i have to say right i'm 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 allergic to traffic i would not be a fan of traffic in any way shape or form but this um, I, this is a nice place to be my bum is is quite comfortable and that's important and if you ride bikes if this is if you're looking at this as a first time rider i don't think i get this as a first time rider because it will catch you with a story it is torquey it is very very torquey um the power delivery is smooth but if you're new and you if you grab at that you're going to kick out the back end but for an experienced um rider say this is a really comfortable place to be and you, you like you know what i'm talking about when i say it's an it's a comfy bum place your bum is comfy very very nice bike even though you know i'm just tipping along here one-handed and i am i am happy out i could do this all day whereas you know when i'm on the phaser and I'm, I'm directly comparing to the phaser here even though these bikes don't belong together they're a different class of bikes but with the phaser when you're in traffic the way the phaser rides it wants to go fast all of the time that's just how it's built it's the type of bike it is this one is perfectly happy tipping along same as the magna it's why i quite like riding the magna because it doesn't make me want to be a hooligan all of the time so if you're the type of person who just likes tipping around looking cool this could be the bike for you if you're tall again because these these reviews are kind of based in my original intent of do, doing reviews for more taller people is this a comfortable bike yeah you won't have a problem with this if you're tall and again just to go over it i am 200 centimeters tall and weigh about 120 kilograms so if you're anywhere even close to that you'll be fine with this the only thing is the these bars are a bit of a reach if if you're shorter you'll probably be closer to them so if you're any taller than me it might be something to definitely get a test ride on one and see how far back you are my elbows are nice and bent you know i'm not straight arming it by any means but it's just something to be aware of gearbox on this bike is fantastic i've been up and down gears quite a bit it's a very flexible gearbox it's very very nice and smooth up and down the gears oh <laughs> oh yeah it's got power <laughs> And it enjoys using it. All right, so final thoughts on this bike. Would I buy one? Yup. This is just a nice bike. Well done, Indian. Ergonomically, this bike is comfortable. Power-wise, I really like the power that it has. I really like how it delivers the power that it has. Handling is as you would expect from a cruiser is it like the most pointy thing in the world no does it is it super flickable no but it handles really good aesthetically i really like how they look particularly this one it's an absolutely beautiful color well color scheme i should say the red with the seats and then the dash matching them is just excellent and practicality wise to be honest i'll give it a rating for practicality but does anyone really care for a bike like this you buy a bike like this because it feels good you don't buy a bike like this because it's practical you buy a bike like my phaser for practicality so final thoughts on practicality who gives a shit doesn't matter it's just a good bike and if you're tall if you're watching this because you watch more of the tall reviews would you buy, would you be okay on this if you're tall absolutely am i okay on this and i'm tall i am this is this is a comfortable bike hands down just a comfortable bike if you watched thank you very much for watching if you liked the video or found it helpful in any way please hit the like button just just give it a poke i really appreciated it it helps me out it gets my videos pushed more um by the youtubes and it makes me feel nice and if you have any interest in seeing more videos like this, uh, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, hit the bell, all that good stuff. And also make sure to follow Franklin Motorcycles, who made all this possible, um, on Instagram and Facebook. If you want to buy this bike, it is for sale, so hit them up, ask them for a test ride, it's there.
and leave a comment under Instagram saying give the Gorilla Biker some more bikes to review. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. Until next time, adios.